Hey everyone, happy Monday. Welcome back to Ask Amy. Today I have a question from Anna Marie, and it's a great question, one that is on people's minds a lot. Um, I'll get to the question and you'll see. So Anna Marie says, how do I get to the point where I deeply understand that whatever another person says or does has absolutely nothing to do with me? I understand that all I ever feel comes from my own thinking, but something is kind of missing when I want to see it this way. So she gets, Anna Marie, you understand to some extent that what someone else does or says about you, what appears to be about you, you know, their actions, their opinions, is those things aren't really about you. They aren't really about us and they can't make us feel anyway, right? They can't make us. Like that doesn't mean we won't, but it means that someone else's words or actions can't make, they can't produce a feeling within us because all feeling and experience produced within us is produced within us, right? So it can't come from out there and somehow make it inside of us and make something happen. And here's where I see people get caught up, me too, right, in this, is, is that someone says something about us, let's say, they have some opinion about you, and where we go is like we're in the content of that opinion trying to see it differently or trying to change our feelings about it. So like someone says, oh, you know, you're, you're no good at your job, let's say. We're like, what do you mean I'm no good at my job? Yes, I am. Here's the evidence. So instantly in our heads, maybe not to them, but again, in our heads, that hits us. Somebody's words hit us, right? Now their words hit us because our mind creates a reaction to that. Our mind says, oh no, you know, they don't like me. And it pushes all our little inner ego buttons and there's a whole reaction started within us. Again, their words didn't make that happen because they could say those words and who knows? We could not pay, be paying attention. We could brush it off. We could not care. There's a million, a million possibilities there, a million options of a feeling that are available. But, but we feel whatever we feel based on where our mind goes, right? So we say, oh my gosh, they think I'm bad at my job. And instantly, as we feel that tension and that tightness and all of that that's arising with, uh, within us, our, our kind of reflex, our habitual reflex is to do one of a few things, but often what we do is our mind goes in to try to prove it wrong so we can hurry up and feel better. So our mind will go in and say, yes, I am. How do they know? They're bad at their job. I'm good at my job and here's why. You know, like our mind starts going and spinning to try to, it's all in an attempt to try to help us feel better in that moment. And all that mental stuff is just the habit. It's just what a mind does when it feels threatened. It'll start bringing in stuff and thinking more. And it's interesting because on the face of it, it sort of feels like it's us trying to help ourselves feel better. But really what's going on is our mind just got super active and now it's trying to calm itself down from that super active place. And it's a bit of a mess. It really doesn't work all that well. So what we don't want to do is try to prove it wrong or, or change our feelings like, oh, I don't care what they think. I'm going to be tough with it. Like none of that's helpful. And it's so, it so misses the mark compared to what's possible, really, like what's available to us. So what's possible and what's available to us that actually really helps in this case, in these cases, is seeing how it's working way beyond how how we feel or you know the evidence that's coming up in our minds. So how do you come to deeply understand and deeply know that what someone says or does has nothing to do with you? Well, you you take what they're saying and doing out of it for a minute. We set all the content aside where we're, our buttons are all pushed. We're not going to do it from that place. But, but from, a, from a neutral place, from a different, calmer, more grounded place, we just keep getting curious about how human experience works, right? What someone thinks, the thoughts that, that arise within them, the words that come out of their mouth, the actions that they do, that's all within them. And absolutely, they're about us in content. Again, they'll say, you this, you that, you know, they're talking about us. But 
it's literally all their experience moving through them and their experience is so fluid and fickle and subjective just like yours is just like ours is right so someone could have a great day and think you're the best thing in the world does that mean you are no they can be having a horrible day and think you're the worst thing in the world does that mean you are of course not doesn't mean anything and literally that's how it goes now well your mind will want to gloss over this but literally think about this how often have we had completely opposing like contradicting preferences and thoughts about something moment one moment to the next all the time that happens all the time I mean look at any relationship any close relationship especially they're the best thing in the world or the worst thing in the world to you. Does it mean anything about them? Of course not. How can it? You just loved them and then you hated them within five minutes. It can't possibly mean anything about them. It just can't. It's, it's thought moving through you, coming to life within you. It just looks so sticky to see through this, so hard to see through this at times because we're so conditioned with seeing life in that way. That's the only reason. It's so it's so logical when you really look at it. And I'm, I don't want to just appeal to logic because that doesn't do much. But, but it is so logical when you look at it that, of course, what we think or feel or do cannot be from or about someone else. And so it just, again, it's so logical that our mind will just, just gloss right over it. We're so used to tying how we think and feel to what someone else just did or said about us. And, and that all that is is just a habit. That's all it is. It's a, it's a habitual correlation that our mind draws that is really inaccurate. So I really want you to, rather than trying to talk yourself out of it or see it differently, back away from it a little bit and take yourself out of the picture probably and just keep getting curious about, about how experience works. It happens within a person, comes to life, it's there within that person, poof, it changes. New experience comes up in the next minute, it might completely contradict what was just there. It's nothing that we wanna hang on so much. It's nothing that we need to hang on. Think about it this way, Anna Marie, too. By the time someone has and has and states an opinion about you, by the time those words come out of their mouth, new experiences move through. So they could change their mind, they're over it, they're past it, they're distracted from it. Like it, it doesn't linger. But, but when you're thinking, when any of us are thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe they didn't said that, you know, then we're now we're just experiencing it. So we're kind of keeping it alive within us and it looks like a real thing, but it's so much more fluid than that. It's done and over for them. So really kind of get in that feel of this constant refresh of how experience is just moving through us and changing all the time. This question's interesting because um, we were just talking about it on one of the Little School Big Change calls recently. There was a woman, there's a, there is a woman in our community who was asking this very question and saying, you know, in her case, um, it was something about being bad at math, I don't remember exactly, and it was something about not having children. And she was saying, well, how, how can I not take that personally when someone criticizes my, my work or my math ability, whatever it was, my analytical ability, when someone says something about the fact that I don't have children and someone else does, like, of course that's personal because those are real true things about me. And it was so funny because as she was saying this, Amanda, who's, uh, who's in school, works in the school, um, I don't know her math ability. I assume she's probably pretty good at math because she's pretty smart, but she also doesn't have children. And as far as I know, doesn't have a ton of thinking about it regularly. So it was like, here's one woman with no children who, who was saying, oh, if someone makes a comment like, well, you don't have children, how would I not get all offended and, and you know caught up in that? And I looked on, on our screen on Zoom at Amanda and because, because you know, she's a perfect example of it. People, maybe people say that to her. I don't know. But either way, like she has a completely different reality around that because that's how it goes. And, and then later Amanda raised her hand and said, well, I'm just like you. <laughs> I don't have children and I don't think I'm very good at math. Doesn't bother me. And again, other things maybe push Amanda's buttons or like remind her of things that, that wouldn't for this other woman. So it's just so... It's just so easy to see evidence when we're in like, well, what they said is about me and what they said does offend me. 
it's so easy to see evidence for that and to feel it as if it's so real and true and our feelings are coming from them until we look up, until we look up and say, oh, wait a minute. I've, I've heard these criticisms or these comments a million times and I feel differently every single time. Or I feel the way I feel, but look, here's someone else and they feel differently. Like we just start to open up our, our experience of this and see, wow, it can't be, it can't be coming from, from where it appears to be coming from. It has to be thought within me that just looks so real and true. So again, the biggest thing I would say, Anna Marie, is, is don't try to argue with it. You know, don't, don't feel offended and then try to not feel offended or feel offended and try to see, oh, that's not personal or that can't be true. That's just going to take you down this rabbit hole and deeper into it. Rather than that, you just want to leave the content out of it and say, hey, when someone says you're beautiful or smart or, you know, whatever they might say nice about you, that's also their thinking. Like expand it out and see how it can really only work in that one way. So I hope that's helpful. I hope it's helpful to others. It's such a common thing. Um, common, really common question. And obviously we all, we all have our buttons pushed and feel offended by certain things, but, and that's okay. That's okay. Because our feelings are always changing, right? Our thoughts are always changing as are the thoughts and feelings of the person who said that thing. So it's uh, perfect to see how it goes all the way around. So uh, the little school of big change is opening in 28 days, kind of crazy, 28 days, um, really soon. So couple things I want to point you toward. Uh, if you go to the link that I'll post here, um, you can also go to the little school of big change.com, but there's a link from my website to that page as well. Uh, you'll see all about the school. We have a new website. Some really exciting changes have been made. So check out that site, see what's there and what's available to you. Um, and also if you want to check out the highlights, we have a highlight series of super short videos that show kind of highlights from some of the lessons. They're little excerpts that have been pulled from some of the lessons within the school and some of the calls. Um, so you'll get a good feel for kind of what's in there. I'm also gonna be doing a lot, an additional Facebook Live um, each week for the next several weeks where I kind of discuss a key lesson or key insight that people have taken away from the Little School of Big Change. Um, just some of the some of the highlights there as well. So I think those are going to happen on Wednesdays, but check back here periodically and, and you'll see those. So thanks so much, guys, for listening. Please send your questions to askamy at thelittleschoolofbigchange.com. And I'll see you back here next Monday, if not before. Bye.